Hey guys, it's me Philip. Welcome to another quarantine tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be looking at creating cool looking stitches in Substance Painter. Uh, I use this technique a lot and it's very simple but I think it looks pretty good. So let's get right into it. We're going to open Substance Painter and load our model in it. We're going to delete the default empty layer. We're going to create new fill layer. We're going to call it Stitch base. We're gonna turn off all the channels except for height and we're gonna set height to minus one. The reason why we are setting the height to minus one is because when you ch look at stitches they generally have like slight dent underneath them so we're gonna create this first and then we're gonna build on top of that and we're gonna create black mask and we're gonna right click it and add paint. Now we're gonna select brushes and scroll down to stitch 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 is small that's the one we're gonna make it bigger and try it out now the the gaps between the stitches seem pretty big now so uh, we're gonna scroll down in the brush settings to spacing and let's try 100 Ah, that's much better. We could probably go even slightly lower, maybe 90. Yeah, that's, that seems to be cool. I'm going to swap this to orthographic view. You can change between perspective and orthographic, but with F5 and F6. So now we're going to draw some stitches. <laughs> yeah, let's let's draw one over here perhaps one over here i mean this there would never ever be stitches like this on a medieval shoe but you know in substance painter when you want to kind of like link to another layer you use something called anchor point how anchor points work is that once you place anchor point it will contain everything underneath it in the stack so when we right click on our mask and click on add anchor point, the anchor point will, conta will contain everything underneath it. So in our case, the paint layer. This, this is stored in the, uh, in the stitch base mask anchor point. So now we will create a new fill layer. We will turn off all these channels set the height to 0.5 and right click uh, rename it to stitches height right click on it add fill layer and now if we click on this grayscale we can see that there is anchor point tab so we'll click on the tab and select our anchor point only anchor points that are underneath our current layer will be visible and possible to use. So you need to think this through before you start working on the scene. Okay, and now you can see that this layer contains everything in here. So if we were to draw more in this paint, it will automatically update in the in the through the anchor point to the fill layer, which is amazing. So now we're gonna set the this mode to height. By default, it's ba it's in base color. We will set it to height, and this these this basically switches between how the layers interact for different for each different channel. Because obviously, maybe if you 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 don't want all the channels to behave the same way. So if you would, for instance, base color, you would want to multiply base color, but you would want to uh, screen the height. This is how you can do that. You, you can switch between those. So we will switch to height and we will set our top layer to light and max. And now you can already see that we get slight dent underneath our stitches from the bottom layer. Now we're going to adjust that a little bit. So we will alt click in our mask, in our base mask and right click and add blur slope. We will change the blending mode to max and we will increase the intensity divider to 100 
and we can decrease the source styling a little bit and increase the intensity. We don't, you don't really need to fuss about this too much because this will just provide some additional variation to the width of the dent below the stitch. And we will add another filter and this time it will be regular blur. Now, this is very important because anchor point only registers everything underneath it. It will not register the blur blurs above it. So if we want, so now if you alt click on the top layer mask, you can see that it's still just the raw stitches with no filters applied to it. But in the bottom layer, you get all the filters applied to it. So now if we click out, you can see that we are already getting pretty okay-ish looking the result. This is probably a bit heavy handed, but you know, we're not gonna tweak it too much. Another thing I like to do is to add another filler because if you look at it, if you look at it right now, it's quite even. And especially when it comes to bloody medieval shoes, they probably would have pretty messy stitching technique or whatever. So it wouldn't be so even. So we will add fill layer and grab our 3D purlin noise. You need to make sure that for the 3D noises to work, that you baked your map, so you need the position map for these to work. So we will scroll down to our, to our noise parameters and we will tile it a bit more. Because what I'm looking for is to add some height variation to the to the dents below. And uh, you know, if we had if the noise was big scale, it would affect all many stitches at once, not right next to each other, with, which wouldn't look good. So you want to make sure that the scale of the noise is small enough so the individual dents can be affected, but not the neighboring ones, like, you know, many neighboring ones. I think this looks pretty good. We will set it to multiply and we will set it to its opacity to 50. Now, I think we have pretty decent looking stitching effect. And what's really great about this is now you can go back to paint and you can just paint some more and it will automatically update it with everything. Now keep in mind that this is that the more you the more effects you layer on top the slower will the scene be. So what I usually do is that I turn off all of this all of these and just paint and then I reapply all the effects and you're not, you know, you can you can paint in real time. Okay, so now that we have the height all set up, I will show you how you can quickly add some materials to the stitches and to the rest of the surface. For the sake of simplicity, I will just use some shelf materials. Let's go with this leather bag, drag it in. This, ooh, which, eh. Fabric rough. Yeah, let's do fabric rough. Now we will uh, hide the top material. We will right click the leather bag, add black mask. We will add a filler layer and we will go and grab our anchor point. Now, if we alt click it, you can see that we have our original stitch data in there. So now we need to clip it to make a sharp mask for this. Uh, and since this is the leather one, uh, since this is the leather material, we want to use it on the surface outside of the stitches. So if we click on the fill and scroll down, see the anchor point, you have levels already there. You don't need to add another one, uh, like a special effect or histogram or something. Uh, you can click on invert. This will invert the mask. If you alt click in it, you will see how it looks. So we, we now need to create a crisp mask. So we will grab our white point and drag it down. Don't go overboard with it. This should be enough. Yeah, now we have good separation between the stitches and the rest of the surface. And we're gonna do the same thing for our fabric layer. So we'll grab black mask add a fill layer, pl plug in our anchor point. And now you can see that we get this mask right there. 
and we just need to do the same thing. We just need to clip it so it's all sharp and crisp. So we will, oh no, not this one. We will grab our white point again and just drag it all the way down. And now you have like basic texture on both. Since we, since this is all driven by this one anchor point, uh, if we uh, grab our uh, stitch brush and do some more stitching, it will automatically update the height map, all the textures and everything. So this, like using anchor points is really essential when working on uh, more complicated surfaces. It can really make your life much, much easier than like redoing it on every layer or uh, you know it's just it's just so much better it is quite taxing on your system but i think it's well worth it okay so this is going to be it for this tutorial hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something new uh if you like the video please leave a like and subscribe uh let me know in the comments what would you like to see next uh, also if you want to get the source files for this check out the link to my patreon below and uh, yeah, uh, see you again soon. Bye.